Under your roof lurks the potentially destructive force of the Superhot. Protection from various fiery dangers is the name of the game at Underwriters Laboratories. A safety testing organization with facilities all over the world, including Northbrook, Illinois. We test about 20,000 different types of products. You see the UL mark on the bottom of your toaster and the back of smoke alarms. And heating tests or temperature testing is one of the most common types of testing that we do. When functioning normally, a self-cleaning oven cooks clean around 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. A coffee maker brews a 150 degree cup of joe. And a hair dryer blows air below 140 degrees. We're doing a demonstration to show what would happen if there were no safety devices in that blow dryer. What we're looking at here is the internal workings of a standard hair dryer. The coiled wire is the heating element. It gets very hot and air blows across it and ultimately dries your hair. The thermostat will cycle on and off and provide the right amount of heat to dry your hair. But if anything goes wrong, such as the thermostat malfunctions, the thermal fuse will open the circuit, shut down the hair dryer permanently, meaning that you have to throw it away because it's overheated and should be disposed of. For this demonstration, we've actually taken out the thermostat and the thermal cutout that would protect you from overheating. When we do a demonstration of this type, we never know exactly what's going to happen because these are very capricious uh, situations when you've got fire and smoke. How about a coffee maker without safety devices? Know what you're doing. Make sure you're aware of what is happening in your kitchen. Meanwhile, don't overlook that soothing lit candle in the corner. Actually, it's over 18,000 fires a year have been attributed to candles, and it's because you've got the open flame. There's a great deal of energy contained in a small space. One quarter of the energy created here will be released as heat, only 4% of which goes toward melting the wax. To break down the temperature of the flame, look to its various colors. You go from the blue on the outside, which is the hottest, at about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. This is where the flame contacts the most oxygen and is able to reach complete combustion. As you move towards the center of the flame, the color changes from yellow to orange to red as the temperature gets cooler, where the inner temperature of the flame is about 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's plenty of heat to fuel a fire. When you've got an open flame, like with a candle, the only thing that uh, you're going to have to worry about is that flame could communicate to anything else that's combustible. While it doesn't have an open flame, your basic tungsten light bulb is way up there when it comes to household super hot. The simple light bulb, in this case, a 100 watt light bulb, the temperature of the film itself is on the order of about 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's about 98% efficient at producing heat and only about 2% efficient at producing light, which we want. Heat may be wasted by a tungsten light bulb, but in a garage, it can be a super hot asset. At the Gator Wrap Shop in Ontario, California, workers use heat tools to shrink wrap customized graphics onto vehicles. And what that does is helps this have a little more conformability to the curves and contours of a vehicle. Typically, for installing or removing graphics, a heat gun runs between 400 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit, but can get much hotter. This is not a hair dryer. A hair dryer, you're in the very low 100 degrees. This is 1,100 degrees. If I were to put my hand a foot out in front of this, I would be burnt almost immediately. Like a hair dryer, the gun uses a heating element. But here, it's much more sophisticated and a lot more controlled. The way that an industrial heat gun is designed, we would bring the power in through a cord in the back. We have a switch box that dials in through an LCD the temperature we're going to achieve. Once we reach that achieved temperature, it will balance there and maintain that throughout the operation. Besides heating graphics, 
Heat guns are used in shrinking electrical tubing, car repair, and curing polymers. Virtually anywhere that you can imagine maintenance is going on or production, they're using heat. The 1100 degree heat gun not hot enough for you? Gator Wraps also uses a super hot gas torch. This gets much hotter than a lighter. We're putting that out to a hot blue flame around 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The torch works very simply. The only control is a valve like a kitchen faucet. If I open the faucet, I get more water. If I open the valve on a butane tool, I get more heat. I don't have the control that I have with electric, but I do have the ability to use it in remote applications. These include soldering, among other things. And even though this pocket-sized torch may be handy, it would still severely burn you within a fraction of a second. So while this vehicle gets all dressed up using heat, another one is enduring thousands of degrees just to get a break. At approximately 6,200 degrees Fahrenheit, tungsten holds the record for highest melting point of any element at atmospheric pressure. Super Hot will return on Modern Marvels, here on History. <laughs>